Right, I'm just off to collect some soil. This has been my favourite place I've visited so far, this forest. The soil here is so loamy. Um, the forest runs up to quite, quite a high point, and I'm finding that all the all the dead organic material is sort of washing into certain areas where it's creating a natural compost bin. And I am really, really love the soil. It's full of worms. It smells like it should smell really rich and earthy. So I'm going to collect some for my next garden, which is an hour drive away. And it should collect, should hit that for about the right time when no one else is about because it's near a shoot supermarket. I park in the supermarket, walk along the river, and then pop up into my magic spot. So it's strictly a nighttime thing, actually. Supermarket shuts at nine. So, collect a load of soil from here. Drive off to the next spot. Plant some plants, plant some seedlings, and hope for the best. Now, I've really been concerned about wild boar here. Wild boar is a problem in this country. Wild boar, just like pigs, they'll eat anything and they mainly look for worms and stuff in the soil and they dig through the soil like a, like a JCB, them things will ruin your garden. And they have hammered many a garden on me on many occasion, both in Catalonia, not up here that I've experienced yet, but I'm sure they will. So I'm thinking of ways to get around that. Human piss is a good one, dog piss is another good one. Lynx, spray some lynx on the trees, that'll get rid of them. Well, that'll scare them, it'll make them think twice. I've been fertilising with worm castings, so I'm going to be attracting these things into my garden, which is challenging. So, I've come up with a little idea. I'm not too sure if it'll work, but I think it will. I'm going to make some scarecrows from babies' clothes. So little baby scarecrows. And I'm going to hang them from the trees so they blow in the wind. And then that got me thinking about if a person stumbles across them. Now, if I stumbled across that and I seen a baby's clothes, a little baby scarecrow hanging from the trees, I think it'd scare me a bit as well. I think I'd be like... What the fuck's this shit? So I'm gonna play on that. And I'm gonna draw a lot of witchcraft stuff onto the baby scarecrows. So the five pentagon, I'll write death on it. Might put a few swastikas on there. So if a human stumbles across it, they're gonna be like, what the fuck's this shit going on here? And it hopefully scare them off as well. So that's my top tip for today. I put a lot of thought into what I'm doing here. Every action has a reaction. So I'm off shopping tomorrow for baby's clothes. The more scarier, the better. I'm gonna get some dolls as well. I think I'm gonna cut up some plastic dolls and hang bits of arms and legs and all that from the trees. So they also blow in the wind, scare off the foxes, scare off any predators but hopefully if like an old man hunter comes walking along is gonna see them and think fuck this place I'm out of here so that, that's me hope or it might attract more people to the area by you know he might go down a pub and go oh, you won't believe what I seen in the trees today you just don't know so it's worth a try I've got some um, trail cameras as well that go off with motion sensors so I'm gonna put some of them up too just to see what type of what type of shit I'm up against really which there's lots of stuff here I'm up against lots of birds there's a lot of bird life and birds love seeds and when you're planting seeds you know they'll find them if they can find a worm they can find a seed so never underestimate nature it's a lot smarter than you believe me it's been a lot it's been around for a lot longer than me or you so you really have got to put a lot of thought into this wild planting of what can go wrong and usually what can go wrong will go wrong so that's where I'm on with today collect some soil get some witchcraft shit going on 
<laughs> I can't stop thinking about this because I'm like, is this going to be a good thing or a bad thing, you know? But for me, if I stumbled across some like dolls hanging from trees, I'd be out of there. I wouldn't hang around in that place, no chance at all, I'd be like, fuck this. And if my friend said to me, oh, let's go back there, I'd be like, nah, I ain't going back there. So, that's what I'm on with. <clears throat> the next part is to go and fucking buy baby's clothes, which I'm not looking forward to. Because I... <sighs> I'm just going to be buying the cheapest ones possible, of all sizes and all shapes. So I can't wait to see the cashier's face when I'm cashing them out. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this, I really can't. It's fucking great fun, but I really cannot believe I'm doing this shit. But if I pull it off this year, I'd be really proud of myself because nobody else is doing this. And that's what the channel's all about, to show people my experiences and hopefully people can learn from it and take something from it. And also to encourage people to do what I'm doing. To motivate people. You know, all this is out there, it's all out there for you. All you gotta do is go and take your dog out for a walk. If you haven't got a dog, go and fucking borrow one. Because you look so much better when you've got a dog. If I see somebody walking in the middle of nowhere, I always think, ooh, what the fuck's he doing there? Just human nature. But then when I see someone they've got a dog, and that changes everything. You're just like, oh, he's walking his dog. So I strongly recommend a dog. The clothes that you wear is also really important. You need to be wearing the right clothes. Try and stay away from camouflage clothes. If you're wearing camouflage clothes, then people are going to think you're a, you're a hunter. And that's the last thing you want. That will really attract attention because... If you are a hunting season, hunters tend to be quite territorial people. So if you are a hunting season, then you look like a poacher. And that's someone will someone will report you for that. You know, you'd be better off looking like a fucking You'd be better off telling them the truth than that that <laughs> don't think you're a you're a poacher. That's the last thing you want. So if you're in an area where where it's known for hiking, dress like a hiker. If you're in an area where there's a nice river, dress like a fisherman. You don't need a rod though, because then again, that goes along the lines of poaching. So I wouldn't take the rod, but you know, the, the hat, a few flies in it, shit like that. Image is so important when you're doing this thing, because let's face it, it's undercover. You don't want people knowing about your gardens, whether it be food or medicine or mushrooms. You can put a lot of work into this and a lot of time and effort. And the last thing you want is someone to come along and ruin that for you. Especially as in these hard hard times of super expensive food and petrol. You know? It's nice to be independent though. If I pull this off, it's going to be a fucking corker. I've gone past my spot because I've been filming this. A fucking idiot, Loz. Pay attention. <coughs> I think I have anyway. Yeah, I have. Right, the next thing is make sure you got signal on your phone whenever you go into these places because you're gonna need to pinpoint them on the Google Maps. I I don't you because I guarantee you're gonna lose these spots. If they're in deep like mine are, I, I've got one that I think I've already forgot because I didn't have, didn't have my signal on, so I couldn't do WhatsApp location. Which is how I, I which is how I store my spots. I know a lot of people are going to tell me now that like, oh, you don't need a signal if you're on Google Maps. I'm still trying to work that one out. That's why. That's why I'm. I've got help on my YouTube channel because I'm not very, I'm not very good with technology. I'm absolutely fucking disgraceful with technology. I'm more about hammers and spanners than I am fucking phones and computers. Yeah. So, signal, really important. Clothes you're wearing, really important. The rocks, 
are really important. Have a look at the rocks. Google them rocks. See what minerals are in them rocks. Because that's in the soil. Is it high calcium area? Has it got lots of iron about? All them types of things are so important. I know this through experience because I'm at, I've been at this a long time. And that's something that, like, I want to get my experience out there for all of you. Because that's something somebody overlooked that so much. You're like, oh, what colour is the soil? What colour is the sand? What colour are your rocks? If you don't know the colours of the sand, if you don't know the colours of the rocks and what them rocks and them minerals mean, you could be fighting a losing battle. What what other plants are growing in the area is also super important. I know you've heard me say this a thousand times before, but it's so true. Plants are a reflection of the soil. Healthier the plants, healthier the soil. More of a diverse species of plants means you can have more of a diverse mineral content of that soil with probably a stable pH. Like in this area, I've got everything growing. Everything. Now, bracken, which is this stuff. This is bracken. That tends to grow in a high acidic area. So if you've only got bracken, you might need to you might need to put some amendments in that soil to just make it a bit more stable for for the plants that you're looking to grow. Or if you've got the time, if you do the hit this early enough, early in the winter, you can always add lime to it, <clears throat> stabilize the pH a bit more. But that is something I don't recommend really. Depending on your area, like out here, I'll only be using my gardens once. I won't be using them time after time. Because I think as soon as hunting season comes in, there's going to be people walking all over this area. Which is uh, something you really want to avoid. And then once you sort of got, get the feel of your surroundings, you get more of an understanding of your soil. It makes the job so much easier. It makes the job a pleasure. When you understand something and you see that every action has a reaction and... There's no better joy, there's no better pleasure than seeing your hard work pulling off. <clears throat> I've lost my spot, you know. There it is, I've got it now. Auto! Come on, mate. Come on. Right, another thing. If you do borrow someone's dog, or you have got a dog, make sure it's a good dog, as in... One that's not going to bring you on top. Like... You've got full control over the dog because if you're in a, in a shady spot and you come across another dog walker and you're trying to hide and be incognito and next thing you know your dog won't stop barking that's you don't want that you know one wants that auto come on mate now here in this area right here it's just full of uh cyclists lots and lots and lots of cyclists in this area so you want a dog that's um it's all right with with bikes and stuff like that because something like that will really people don't forget that fucking hell i nearly got fucking hit by a dog today some some fella with dreadlocks and a big ginger beard oh yeah i seen him in such a place on fucking wednesday you want to try and avoid all that chitter chatter because odds are when you work in these environments the very also very small communities where everybody knows everybody everyone's fucking related to everybody you know, odds are the, the local police officer will be right in with the community. That tends to be how it is in the Basque area, which is it's not really a bad thing, you know. But for my situation, it's not a very good thing either. Auto, come on. Come on, mate. Come here. Come on. Here he comes. Dun, 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 dun. It's like B.A. Baracas. I ain't getting on no plane. Come here, you son. He's a good boy, isn't he? He's a good boy, isn't he? Can't tell you how good this dog is, though, you know? Right. Um, let me show you some good soil. Bear with me here. Auto, come on, mate. Now, another top tip as well is... Right, so this is like the bottom of the forest, and this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for areas like this that have got rocks here, 
collecting a lot of leaf material. It's got rainwater washing into this area. So it's all breaking down like one big, one big large compost heap. Um, lots of rotting wood, which is also essential. Quality soil is made up of broken down plant material. So if you can get that in a natural place that's just full of enzymes and teeming with microbes, you're halfway there. You know, you can't really buy it. Well, you can buy it, but it's good because it's good, but it's better because it's free. And that's what this whole journey is about. Not buying anything and just working with my surroundings and what my surroundings is giving me. So that's where I'm at. Collect some soil. Plant up some more seeds. Uh, and then get on to my next spot. Which I'm really looking forward to. Hope everyone's having a blessed day. Stay safe. Keep smiling.